Social entrepreneurship is a challenging thing to define because it captures a big range of activities, but at its heart it's still entrepreneurship as you'd understand it in a commercial environment. So it's about using innovation to exploit opportunities. Um, and that happens regardless of whether you've got enough resources at the outset. Um, and also it can happen in any context. We understand it in startups most commonly, but it can happen in any kind of organisation. Social entrepreneurship is all those things, but with a focus on trying to address a social and environmental issue at its heart as well. Social entrepreneurs act where they see some kind of failure, whether it's by the market in terms of not address providing the um, the conditions for humanity that we would like, or where government intervention hasn't been successful either, and or where um, not-for-profits or NGOs typically intervene as well to address um, these kinds of issues. Where social entrepreneurship has a powerful but complementary role to play is that generally they're not constrained by particular modes of operating that traditional businesses or traditional not-for-profits or government policy um, often is. And so they can use models which blend the, the best of, of different models of trying to achieve um, the social and environmental change. So that leads to quite innovative combinations of, of, and ways of doing things, including combining capital, different types of capital with different types of business models. So it's an exciting and, and compelling um, mode of getting change done. So one of the things that um, were great examples of social entrepreneurship globally, which has achieved real scale, um, is the Grameen Bank model of microfinance. That's one of the more famous models that led to Muhammad Yunus, the founder, achieving or receiving a, a Nobel Peace Prize. But probably more importantly than that, he proved that um, it's possible to lend to the poor and provide them with um, banking services um, with a um, opportunity for them to participate in the economy, um, whereas previously they'd been marginalised from that. From a global perspective, that's a, that's a great example of social entrepreneurship achieving scale. In New Zealand, we don't have many examples of organisations scaling like that, but we've got some exciting early stage companies which are proving the case. One of which is uh, ThoughtWired, which takes a technological approach to trying to um, dramatically improve the quality of life for people with um, severe disabilities. So they take um, a head sensing um, a helmet or a headset which will um, sense the brain waves of people that are locked in because of disability or injury and enable them to use that, um, that technology to communicate or control devices so to increase their um, independence and ability to interact with the world around them. So quite um, an exciting commercial opportunity in terms of the, the technology and its ability to scale, but also has a, a huge impact on the quality of life of, for people for whom the market hasn't yet served. The development of the social entrepreneurship ecosystem in New Zealand is, we could say it's lagging behind some of the other economies that we would look to and, and care about what's happening over there, particularly the UK and, and North America. The big reason why the growth of this type of activity is difficult is because it, it doesn't fit with what's normal. We have institutionalised that traditional businesses um, have shareholder primacy that drives the bulk of their behaviour and that the addressing of social and environmental issues is done by not-for-profits and charities. So we've got this binary kind of model. Social entrepreneurs are violating that to some extent because they're blending the principles of business and the practice of businesses with the um, impact measurement models and the understanding of issues for, that was traditionally um, belonged to the charity and not-for-profit sector. So the capital, the way that capital flows within an economy, the way that our legislation is set up and our laws and regulations are set up around that binary model. Um, so this creates challenges for anyone who's hybrid. Um, so at, at the big picture, that's one of the, one of the big challenges. Um, what we've seen that's been successful in catalyzing and supporting the growth of, of social entrepreneurship is, is a number of things. Um, government's played a, a, a strong role um, in creating the, the space for this stuff to happen. That can be, exist as particular policies which um, catalyze capital and, and, or incentivize investors to invest in these kinds of businesses, um, to provide um, legal frameworks to incorporate in a type of legal, legal form or organisation which um, encompasses both the social environmental with the commercial. Um, and increasingly it requires some leadership. It requires leadership from investors um, to say, actually, you know what, I want to invest in a way which aligns with not only with the commercial or financial returns that I'm looking for, but with the, the change I want to see in the world as well. 
Um, so that flow of capital is, is crucial for, for scaling these ventures. So it does take an ecosystem. It's not a particular one particular lever you can pull. It's a, it's a number of, of, of factors interacting. Well, social entrepreneurship is a very rewarding activity. You've got all the benefits that any other entrepreneur would realise in terms of pursuing a passion, innovating and, and solving a problem. But social entrepreneurs have the the motivation and the excitement of trying to grapple with some of those wicked problems which are really um, troubling us in a, in a global sense as a society. So the rewards are, you know, we're really trying to change things. We're trying to make create systemic change. So it's a rewarding activity in and of itself. Um, but then you've got also as employers, you create an environment where um, people are able to align their talent with their passion and what they find meaningful work creates a significant competitive advantage when you're attracting talent. So I think the, the core of why people should do social entrepreneurship and continue to be excited about it is because you've got that, that real alignment between your talent and what you find as, as meaningful work and, um, and being able to create, create change in the world. Who wouldn't want to get excited about that?